Yo, my fellow traders, it is good to see you on Monday. This is November 20th, 2023. I'm John Zadar, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where I like to share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks all through the day. I'm keeping my eye open for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, most of the stocks I find, I find when I'm looking at the charts, and I spend a lot of time on the charts, but I can see a lot of charts in the time I'm there. Reading the news and the filings takes a lot of time, folks. And then you've got to lean on your own judgment, what's hot and what's not. But looking at the charts, it's much clearer. It's more defined. You can see the volume coming in or a breakout setup. You can see huge bounces or the technicals on fire. Well, when you find a chart that has heat, then go take the time going through all those filings and press releases looking for a catalyst. When you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. And I got three for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is DISH, ticker D-I-S-H, DISH Network Corporation. Now, I don't have to tell you what DISH does. They're one of the biggest broadband providers in the country, covering 70% of America. Well, they just had news come out. They're involved with the merger with another big company that does what they do, but from space. Now, the chart, it's a buying opportunity, folks. They just reported financials at the beginning of the month, and they weren't as great as they were a year ago. They weren't bad. They just weren't as good. Well, it took a big drop going from about $5.60 down to $3.50. And that's where she's sitting right now, way down here with this big news. Looks like a buying opportunity to me. So the company finished today at $3.64 with just under 2% gains. Uh, they tell me she's not on any tier. I know that's code for the NASDAQ. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she's down a little bit, dropping from 11.4 million shares down to 9.2 million shares. Share structure for DISH? Well, they don't give us a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is just under 300 million. We don't know what the float is. It could be as high as 295 million, or it could be considerably less. Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap for the company? We're just over $1 billion. Looking at the financials, now keep in mind that big dip on the chart, it's all about the revenues. And though they were good, they just weren't good enough. This company is making a lot of money. We've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. So these revenues we're looking at, those are all in the billions. 2019, they were roughly $13 billion. Here at the end of 2022, we were at $16.5 billion. And they are pulling in strong profits all along the way. At the end of 2022, they took home $5.3 billion in profits. Looking at her quarterly reports, well, she's doing an average of about $4 billion every quarter, a little up, a little down. But the most recent one, compared to June's, which was 3.9, and compared to September's of last year, 4.1, what do we got? Well, they say it dropped from 4.1 last year down to 3.7 billion this year, which is the lowest quarterly revenue reports we've had yet. That's about $400 million down. But is it worth a $2 drop on the chart? I don't think so. They also tell us that the net loss attributable to Dish Network totaled $139 million for the third quarter of 2023 compared to $412 last year. Well, we're saving money there. That's about $250, $300 million we just saved. That's going to offset the losses in revenues. But I think it's this one right here. Diluted loss per share was $0.26 cents for the third quarter compared to earnings per share of $0.65 cents a year ago. That's probably what really brought it down, folks. All right, let's go take a look at those disclosures now. The disclosures are the only place we're going to get any information. There are no news presses. Now, most of these are about the merger and the change of management that's occurring because of it. So we're going to dive into a few of these right now. First one we're going to look at is the big one. This is the news itself. 
Now, they don't have it out in a news press, but it is inside the 8K. There is a news press in here. They tell us that Dish Network Corporation and EchoStar Corporation to combine creates a global connectivity leader with premier wireless, satellite, and video distribution capabilities expected to generate significant cost and revenue synergies. I can believe that. Strong asset base and enhanced free cash flow generation position combined company for growth and value creation. Each company has got roughly $2 billion in cash to work with, so we have no problem with money. This happened August 8th. Dish Network and EchoStar Corporation today announced they have entered into a definitive agreement for a merger. They tell us that the transaction combines Dish Network satellite technology, streaming services, and nationwide 5G network with EchoStar's premier satellite communication solutions, creating a global leader in terrestrial and non-terrestrial wireless connectivity. Both companies have strong momentum, highlighted by Dish's 5G wireless network that now covers more than 70% of the U.S. with full commercialization underway and the successful launch of the EcoStar Jupiter 3 satellite, which they just launched in July of this year, with significant available capacity for, for converged terrestrial and non-terrestrial services. This is a strategically and financially compelling combination that is all about growth and building a long-term sustainable business. This was said by Charles Ergen, who is now the chairman of the board of both DISH and Echo Star. Dish Network shareholders will own approximately 69% of the new company. Echo Star shareholders will own approximately 31%. So the question arose, when are you closing this deal? Because it isn't closed yet. I had to look everywhere. I found it underneath the termination paragraph. They tell us here that either Dish or Echo Star may terminate the amended merger agreement under certain circumstances, including if the merger is not completed by April 2nd, 2024. So it looks to be that April 2nd, 2024 is when they want to have this closed by. However, they do have an automatic extension built in for three months in the event that the required satellite and communication approvals have not been obtained. So they are covering their bases. So you've got two big companies here, Dish and EchoStar. They each have their own footprints. They each have their own business model. They each have their own assets, customer base. I mean, you're talking about two big companies coming together with no problems, creating a juggernaut of a company that's not going to be going anywhere for a very long time. And between the two companies, right now, they have got over $30 billion invested into them. Now, there's one other fact I do want to cover with you. I have been hearing a lot of buzz about Dish and DirecTV merging. So, of course, I did some research on that. I didn't find anything. Not about a merger, anyways. I did find their names in the same paragraph in a filing right here with this company. They tell us that back on March 9th, 2022, Entropic Communications filed a lawsuit against the company. Generally, the plaintiff accuses that the satellite antennas the low noise block converters, signal selector and combiners and set top boxes, and the manner in which they process signals for satellite television customers infringes on certain patents. So we've got a patent infringement case here and the company is being sued. And on October 24th, their case got shuffled over to California with a companion case against DirecTV. DirecTV, Dish, and a few other companies are all being sued, but no merger. The only merger I see is with EchoStar, which is good enough for me. Everything looks good, folks. I think we're going to see a jump on the charts and cover that gap. That's over two bucks and then probably continue to grow. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we're looking at ticker D-I-S-H, Dish Network. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a high six months ago of just about $12. She was deep under the 200. Once it started to level out here, she had an opportunity to break out, and it was looking good. She stayed up there for a while, then came down under the 200, and she has been under it ever since. Now, she almost had a breakout right here. That was on the 6th. 
Everybody was excited about their financials coming out, rising, rising, rising in anticipation, hit that 200 at the same time the financials came out, and boom, she fell that two bucks all the way down here to $3.21 for her ultimate low. She's been going sideways for about 10 days now, and she is just now starting to break out over that 50-day SMA. We don't have any special volume to talk about here, but our oscillators are all set up for recovery. We've got that crossover on our PPO pushing up. Our MACD is about ready to cross the signal line. Green bars are accumulating. And our RSI is pushed all the way from about 32 up to 61 right now. So she is setting up for the bounce. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was under the 200. Then everybody got excited about the financials. Then they got very upset about the financials, hit that low, went sideways, and now we're really starting to look like a breakout setup is coming into the picture. A typical breakout. She has gotten up over top of that 50. Our 20 has just crossed the 50, and she is working towards that 200. Even our 200 haul has started to turn up. I would like to see this get more level. We need a big green spike to go through this and come back down. That'll help that 200 to level out. Our oscillators, they are still pretty decent. Our PPO is pushing up, our MACD is pushing up already over the signal line, and our RSI is just about ready to go into the overbought. She's at 69.97. Five day, five minute chart. Wow, lots of volatility here, right? She was all over the place, but she's bouncing on that 200. Took a big dip here down to that low bubble, and off of that low, she is climbing strong. She slowed down, crossed into the 200. Shot off of it, though, got up on top of her 50-day SMA, and she is launching right now at $3.69. Things are looking strong. Volume is getting stronger at the end of the day. Our 200-day SMA is climbing. Our oscillators... Our PPO is strong. It has calmed down a little bit right now, but it is still hot. Our MACD is doing a bounce right now. She's trying to come off of her line, and our RSI is at 59. The chart looks like she is trying to recover right now. She took a big drop. I think it was overkill. I don't think she needed to drop that far for $400 million. When she swings $300 million on most quarterly reports, so I thought that was overkill. Not to mention, their savings in their net losses was about 250 to 300 million. So what? They were down 100, 150 million. It's not a big deal. So I think this merger is going to pick this chart right back up and there are some gains sitting there, folks. Now there's more information. I didn't cover it all. So get out there and do some DD. But in the meantime, put DISH on your watch list. All right, I'm finally going to do it. I've had a lot of requests to look at this company. This is Backed Holdings, ticker BKKT. And I'm going to be honest, I've been very hesitant to talk about this company for one reason. Because everybody, and I mean everybody who's asked me to look at it, has asked me to look at it because they say this company is backing the one world currency. One world <laughs> currency? What are you talking about? Well, I dove into all of their press releases, all of their filings, looking for this one world currency. It wasn't mentioned anywhere. Then it occurred to me what everybody was talking about. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is accepted globally. It's in virtually every country. So yeah, I guess you could think of it as a one world currency. But in my mind, every time I heard that, I was thinking every country was going to sacrifice their own fiat money and adopt Bitcoin as their currency. We were going to be one globally friendly financial community all using Bitcoin. Bah, humbug. That's why I wasn't talking about the company. But I see what they're talking about now. The company's involved with crypto. They can hold your assets for you safe. They have trading platforms. Right now, they sell Bitcoin and Ethereum, but as you're going to see in the news, they've just added six more coins, and they've just made a deal with another company, so they're going to be able to move money from business to business, from person to person, and it's going to be backed by Bitcoin. Even though you don't own Bitcoin and you're only sending money, it's going to be backed by Bitcoin. I find that very interesting. Now, the company just reported revenues here this month. They weren't the best, although their revenues are something interesting to look at right now. They did take a drop on the chart. 
And then they took a bounce. And right now she is setting up for a breakout, which you'll see better when we get to the charts. So back to holdings, she finished the day at $1.37 with about 8% gains. And I do believe, because it says no tear here, that she too is on the NASDAQ. So what's the relative volume for back today? Nice jump, going from 1.6 million up to 6.8 million today. Share structure. Well, we don't get a lot of information here either. Outstanding share count is about 91 million. Don't know what the float is. It could be really low or it could be 91 million. Market cap for the company, we got about 116 million. Financials. All right, remembering those three zeros behind any of these numbers, back in 2020, we had 28 and a half million. Year later, we were up 11 million to 39. And in 2022, we hit 54 and a half million dollars, getting to keep 37 and a half million. Checking out those quarterly reports, you can see she was running an average here of about 12 to 15 million, and then boom! <laughs> Look at those revenues in June of 2023, going from 12, 13 million to 347 million. Honestly, I'm not sure where all those revenues came from, and I'm not sure where they all went either. Cost of those revenues was 336 million. So they only got to keep 11 and a half million of that 347 million. Now, looking at their most recent financials, they tell us here their total revenues for September of this year was $204 million. Their total expenses were 257 million, down 44.2 million, saving them 26% on their expenses. So the revenues dropped a lot, 150 million. But where are they all coming from? Where are they all going? Why is it swinging so much? Some more due diligence is necessary, folks. Now, another piece of information I saw here that I didn't see anywhere else, which I find interesting, is they have seamlessly brought in all of their new clients that they had signed up from the last quarter. They tell us we onboarded nearly all of the new clients that were signed in the prior quarter. Our time to activate is consistent with historical trends of 45 days. So they're on the ball right now. There's no doubt about that. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. We've got three recent disclosures here all in November. We've got an 8K and a 10Q. Both of these have to do with the financials. If you're interested in the company, forget about Google. Don't waste your time doing searches running around all over on the internet. Just come on over to a 10K or 10Q. They've got everything in there and it's not as hard to read as you think. Use your search bar. You'll find what you're looking for. And we have a Form 4. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. And you can do that in a variety of ways. We're always interested when they buy them or sell them. This is neither. It's actually working with options. So let's jump on over into that news now. Now the company's got a few pieces of news over here we need to take a look at. But the most important piece of news, their new deal, that's not here. I had to go running around the internet to find it. So I've got that for us too. So we've got three pieces of news here to consider. The first one, it's a little strange. This came out November 8th. The dip on the chart at closer analysis isn't from the financials. It's from this piece of news. I've got to presume it's the only thing I could find on 11.8 back to participate in Oppenheimer's sixth blockchain and digital asset summit. Why would the stock fall 30% on that news? There has to be something else somewhere else. Then we've got two pieces of news here we're going to jump into. One that came out on the 9th of November and one that came out on the 15th. The one that came out on the 9th Back announces expansion of international footprint and custody client base. The company expects to be live with crypto capabilities across new Latin American, European, and Asian markets by year end. We're talking what, five, six weeks at the most. They tell us here that backed and longstanding client Happy, a stock trading platform, recently furthered their Latin American crypto trading capabilities, expanding into Mexico and Argentina, and also expect to go live in Brazil by the end of 2023. Backed and Happy also expect to launch in Spain by the end of 2023. 
In addition, Backit will provide crypto trading custody services in the UK and the EU to Crypt App 3 Overse, planning to launch by year end. Another deal that they're working with. And then in Asia, Backit will partner with 3 Overse throughout Asia, including Hong Kong and Singapore. So they're just getting out there further and further. The other news that came out on the 15th is about the coins they are adding. Backed will add six additional tokens to the Backed Custody platform for a total of eight coins, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, Dogecoin, USD Coin, and Shiba Inu. Really, they got Shiba now. <laughs> Do they still sell that? And that last piece of news. This came out October 23rd. Backed to take the Lightning Network mainstream offering UMA support to clients. Today, we're excited to share we are supporting a new open standard for money transmission. It's called Uni Universal Money Addresses, or UMA. BAX has collaborated with LightSpark to be one of its initial partners, and we are pleased to announce the alpha launch of our UMA-capable Lightning service. This new service can be leveraged for cross-border remittances, business-to-business -business settlements, instantaneous deposits and withdrawals for trading, or global interoperable person-to-person -person payments. While trading and custody will always be at back's core, we have spoken many times about the evolution of Bitcoin from a speculative asset to powering everyday utility. We share LightSpark's vision for internet native payments with Bitcoin serving as the neutral liquid internet native asset. But you shouldn't have to be a Bitcoin enthusiast to get those benefits. You don't even have to own Bitcoin. Our clients and their customers need not know or care that Bitcoin is being used under the hood. They also do not need to hold Bitcoin. We take care of the transaction logistics on the network for them. Bitcoin becomes a money transmission protocol that enables fiat-to-fiat -fiat transfers, Bitcoin optional. Backed is a publicly traded company with audited financials that can provide a full suite of solutions from custody operating under the Back Trust company to trading and on-ramps. We are also a FinCEN registered money service business with MTLs in every U.S. state that requires one, including holding bit license in New York. This means we are uniquely positioned as a compliant platform and able to service all types of businesses and their end users. Our collaboration with LightSpark, in addition to another leading lightning service provider, IBEX, enables a compliant way to leverage the leading internet native rails for payments without volatility. The LightSpark team are digital payment veterans, led by David Marcus, who was the former president of PayPal and a leader of payments and crypto efforts at Meta Facebook. LightSpark's co-founders don't just understand traditional payments, but were also at the heart of Meta's efforts to create Diem, formerly known as Libra, their own crypto coin. This legacy brings deep experience in understanding what it takes to create truly internet native payment solutions. So there you go, folks. You're going to be able to transfer money you can transfer dollars to someone in Mexico who will get pesos, and it's all going to be backed up by Bitcoin. No, I don't understand how it works, but it sounds awesome to me. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Let's take a look at backed holdings, ticker BKKT. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Let's put a little perspective on this chart. We're going to grab our regression channel. This is a real simple tool to use. You don't have to put it anywhere specifically. Just poke the day you want it to start on and poke the other day you want it to end on. And look, voila, your channel's laid in there perfectly like magic. So the wizard says. As you can see, she's been in a downtrend for the last six months. We had a serious breakout from the bottom of the channel, through the channel, all the way up to this high of $2.35 in July. A very quick wick. She came back down, crashing through the channel, the 200, the bottom of the channel, hitting this low. Now, that is November 8th when that news came out about them going to that convention. I don't know why it fell 30%. It went from $0.92 cents all the way down to $0.64. Cents. 
Then you had their financials come out, which weren't great, right? They lost $150 million and still she is climbing. She has been pushing up ever since then from underneath this channel, through the channel, all the way up here on a quick wick, falling back down to about $1.37. And it looks like she may stay outside of this channel make a new trend, stop the downtrend, begin an uptrend. Our 200 day SMA is flat. It is finally flat. This was falling and now it is totally flat. Here comes our 20 day SMA over the 200. That's a golden cross. Here comes our 50 day underneath it. These should help push the price up. Our oscillators, they're looking good. Our PPO is climbing strong. Our MACD is climbing strong. Our RSI was in the overbought. She's just stepped out by a hair. And you can see our volume has been growing consistently here. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Downhill trend, down to that low bubble. You can see as soon as she hit that low bubble, look at all the volume. All the volume started coming in off of this low bubble. She has worked her way up over that 200, through the channel, on top of the channel, hitting that high and pulling back, sitting over the channel, underneath her nine. I would like to see her on top of the nine, but over top of the 20. Our oscillators say she is still pulling down right now. I would anticipate bouncing off of this, hoping she's not gonna come back underneath. She's gonna test this a few times before she changes her trend. Our RSI is cleared down at 54 right now, so things are cooling off. Coming down to our five day, five minute chart, well, that chart looks good. We've got a low bubble in this corner of 71 cents underneath the 200, broke through that 200 and has climbed up to that high, has fallen back and is laying right on top of the 200. That's beautiful placement right there. Now, I'm not happy to see every single SMA coming down, cutting through the 200 in this direction, but I like the way she's fighting not to fall right now. Our oscillators say we are in recovery. You can see our PPO was just about ready to cover that pink line. Our MACD is just about ready to cross that signal line. And our RSI was way, way deep in the basement. Clear down here at 16. And right now she's at 49, which is still pretty cool. But that chart looks pretty good. BKKT. They brought on a whole lot of new clients. They are expanding into new countries. They've made a deal with this light spark and they're going to be moving money around the world. Sounds like they're going to be bringing in revenues as if they haven't already, right? They jumped from 12, 13 million up to 350 million. How did they do that? And they just did another 200 million. So it's not like they're a $12 million company anymore. The company is making money and it looks like they're going to be making a heck of a lot more money in the near future. Remember, everything they were talking about was to be at the end of 2023. I like BKKT now that I've taken a look at it. But hey, folks, do me a favor. Quit talking about one world currency. You're going to scare all Christians away. Now, like most of the companies we talk about, I found this company by looking at the charts. This is NEP Neptune Wellness. Now, I almost went by this chart, almost missed it. She's been very docile for two months, just really, really flat. But when I got a little bit closer, I saw a big jump and it was just today. She had a lot of volume come in. The price jumped. She's put herself right up underneath the 200 and now she looks like a primed atypical breakout chart. She's looking really good. Why well, came over here looking for a catalyst? Why are you jumping? They had news come out today. They're making an acquisition in a company that's involved with, that's right, artificial intelligence. So, NEPT, Neptune Wellness, finished today at 85 cents with over 25% gains. And I'm going to presume that she too is on the NASDAQ. So what does Neptune Wellness Solutions do? Well, it depends where you read. Over here, they tell us that Neptune is active in the field of high value added natural product extraction from marine biomasses. Using an exclusive patented process, Neptune processes abundant and underexploited marine species such as krill. I haven't read anything else about krill anywhere, so I don't think they're involved with that anymore. And they used to be involved in cannabis. I was totally aware of that. 
And I just got done reading, they sold all their cannabis assets. So they're not involved in that either. So if they're not dealing with krill and marijuana, what are they doing? Well, jumping into the most recent news press, they tell us they are now a CPG company. That is consumer packaged goods. Neptune is a consumer packaged goods company that aims to innovate health and wellness products. The company was founded in 1998 and is headquartered in Laval, Quebec, with the United States headquarters now in Jupiter, Florida. The company focuses on natural, sustainable, plant-based, and purpose-driven lifestyle brands. The company's products are available in more than 29,000 retail locations and include well-known organic food and beverage brands such as Sprout Organics, Nosh, and Nurture Me. These are all organic baby food companies. As well as nutraceutical brands like BioDroga and Forest Remedies. With its efficient and adaptable manufacturing supply chain infrastructure, the company can quickly respond to consumer demand and introduce new products to its retail partners and e-commerce channels. So the company has products of their own in the food and beverage and nutraceutical sectors, but they also make these products for other companies. Whatever they want, they'll develop it, design it, package it for them. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Wow, wow. Look at that, folks. Huge increase. I think we're talking roughly 120 times her normal volume, going from roughly 100,000 shares to just over 12 million shares today. Share structure for NEPT. Oh, come on. Is that right? I'm going to have to do some more research and not right now. But folks, look, they tell us the outstanding share count is 602,000. Not million, thousands. There's no zeros we got to put behind that. Now, I do know on the NASDAQ, they have a minimum criteria for everything, including the float. A company cannot have less than 1 million shares in the float. Well, they've only got 602,000 outstanding, and the float is never higher than the outstanding. So that is a problem. The NASDAQ is going to tell them they've got to fix that. And how do you fix it? You do a public offering. You just put more shares on the market. But as it reads right now, if that's correct, we have got a micro float under a million shares. Folks, this thing could run and run hard. Uh, the market cap is also super duper small. It is less than a half a million. They've got a minimum criteria on that as well. So the NASDAQ could hit them for that. You figure out the market cap by multiplying all the shares times the price. That's why it's so small right now. Looking at the financials for Neptune. Well, you can see she's making good money from 2020 all the way to 2023. Every single year, she has increased her revenues by about 10 to 15 million, but she's losing money. Sometimes a little, sometimes a lot, but she isn't making profits yet. Quarterly, well, off and on now. Their revenues are still jumping and bouncing around. They're going from roughly 10 million to 16 million. They're on the low end right now. And their profits, sometimes they're losing money, sometimes they're making money. Right now, they're making money this last quarter. They got 1.3 million in June. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Cash in the bank, they've got $1.3 million. Total assets of about 30 and a half million. Uh, total liabilities more, 49 million, which means we are holding shareholder equity a deficit of about 18 and a half million. Now it was on November 14th, the company came out with their financials and they weren't real good. They lost money, revenues were down. We're not gonna go through it all, but just tapping on to a few of these numbers. This is their second quarter for 2024, the way their fiscal year lays out. Consolidated net revenue of 8.7 million was down from 12 million compared to the same period last year. This is largely due to a decrease in food and beverage revenues compared to last year. A reported second quarter net loss of 5.3 million compared to a reported net loss of 37.3 million compared to last year. That's better. They aren't losing as much money. 
Gross loss was a half million compared to gross profit of 1.1 million. Now here's some extra information I didn't even know about, and I'm sure you're going to be glad to hear. The company announced that the board of directors have approved a plan to proceed with a spin out to Neptune shareholders of a majority of its equity interest in Sprout. Effectively converted a substantial portion of Neptune Sprout debt into Sprout equity, resulting in Neptune having increased its Sprout ownership from 50.1% to approximately 89.5% and being removed as a guarantor for Sprout Organics promissory notes. They're going to do a spin out of this baby food company, Sprout, and they're getting rid of all the debt before they do it. They're cleaning it up and making it strong before they put it on the big market. And if you're invested in this company, you're going to get shares in Sprout as well. Let's check out those disclosures. We do have a few recent ones over here. We've got some Form 4s. These are sales that the insiders made. Not big sales, a few thousand shares out of a few million. So I think they're just paying bills myself. We got an 8K here, which correlates to the big news we're gonna look at. And then a 10Q and an 8K, both of these correlate to the financials. So let's jump on into that news. We've gone back here to September 22nd when the company announced a public offering for $4.5 million. And in four days, it was over. They had sold all the shares, had their $4.5 million. At the beginning of November, they tell us they completed the debt reorganization for Sprout. They also reported their financials. And then today, we had our big news. Neptune Wellness announces letter of intent to acquire leading data marketing and artificial intelligence company, DataSys, for a total potential consideration of $112 million. They tell us over here that the company has entered into a non-binding letter of intent to acquire DataSys Group. The non-binding LOI establishes the framework for a potential transaction, whereby Neptune would acquire 100% of the outstanding equity of DataSys. DataSys is a leading data marketing company that utilizes artificial intelligence and machine learning to derive intelligence from one of the largest consumer and business data sets in the world. DataSys leverages its expansive data of over 3 billion records and technology to help companies more accurately target their ideal customers and provide intelligent marketing solutions. DataSys clients include leading global corporations such as Microsoft, Ford, MasterCard, and Honda. For full year 2022, DataSys' unaudited results for revenues were over $25 million and $9.1 million in EBITDA. EBITDA is what your revenues are before you deduct everything you owe. Total potential consideration for the acquisition is $112 million. There's a lot of parts to make it happen. They're going to pay $20 million in cash. They're going to issue $32 million in restricted shares, and they're going to get a loan of a sort. Now, I want to point out that this $32 million in restricted shares is restricted, and at certain points in time, they tell us over the next 10 to 30 months, they will allow them to sell some of the shares little by little. So we don't have to worry about a pump and dump. Get everybody excited, get that price rising, and then all of a sudden the insiders sell all their shares and bam, that stock crashes hard. Pump and dump. We don't have to worry about that here. So we have got the company doing a couple things. We've got a spin out of Sprouts. They have fixed the debt with that, making it more profitable for us. The company now owns 89% of it instead of 51%. And when they spin it out, we're going to get free shares. They are proposing an acquisition for this artificial intelligence company, which is already making revenues. Everything is looking good here, folks. This is why the chart had a bounce today. And this is why we're going to be watching NEBT. Let's go take a look at that chart. I know it's just a little itty bitty bump, but it caught my attention. This is sticker NEPT Neptune Wellness. We got a six month, four hour chart here. Would you believe that the high bubble back in April was $28.70? Now, I was worried maybe there was a reverse split here, but I don't see any bubbles anywhere. I didn't read anything about it. Recently, they've been adjusting the charts when there's a reverse split. 
Say this had a one in 10 reverse split and it had a high of $2. Well, after they adjust the chart, that $2 high becomes multiplied out by 10 and becomes a $20 high. And you actually see a $20 high on the chart, though it never, ever hit that. Well, I don't see any reverse splits here, and I do see a high bubble of $28.70 back in April. Then we had a terrible fall when she broke this 200, dropping from $23 all the way down to just under nine bucks. And she wasn't done. She just started falling little by little, more and more, until she was down here to $4. Then she had a rip from $4 up to $14. A $10 rip right there, folks. Then she came down, had another bump, and then fell down to this area. And she's been down here since September, not doing anything, no volume to talk about, nothing until today. Look, folks, it's bare naked here. Nothing, absolutely nothing at all happening. And then today, the volume came running in, pre market carried on through the day. She jumped here from 68 cents, breaking the 200, hitting $1.58, falling all the way back, now on top of her 50-day SMA, on top of her 9-day SMA, and looking strong. Our PPO, that is above the line, pushing up ever so gently, but it's not pushing down. Our MACD has had a strong jump, showing strength, but going sideways right now. And our RSI did have a hot jump, but she's cooled off and she's down there right at the coolest point I like to see, 55. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Not a whole lot going on, right? She's just getting on top of her 200-day haul here. Hit this low, big deal. Nobody did anything after the low. She just stuck there for a few more days and then today she jumped. Starting off at that 68 cents, she hit $1.62 pre-market and then came back down and really didn't do anything the rest of the day and looks like she's drooping a little bit right now. Oscillators don't look very excited. All of them are starting to bend over and look like they're cooling off. But this is a nice setup, folks. Our 20-day SMA is crossing the 200. Here comes the 50 in the 200 haul. It looks probable for another rise. Five-day, five-minute nothing <laughs> and look at that what is that four in the morning no it is eight in the morning eight in the morning she took that flying leap really really fast came all the way down even before the market opened when the market opened she was on top of her 200 haul at 83 cents when she was at 67 cents the day before yeah, you missed a big rip, but you're still above. You're still ahead of the game. Then she fell down to her 200, and she's been bouncing off that 200, and now she's going flat again. I don't know if she's going to sleep or if it's a trick. I would definitely keep my eyes on her, folks. She's just had big news. It's bringing in revenues. They got a spin out, for goodness sakes. They fixed all the debt. We're going to own 89% of Sprout, not just 51%, which means we'll get bigger share count. I'm liking it. The chart doesn't look as sweet as we'd like, but today she woke up. What's she going to do tomorrow? NEPT, folks. It needs some more due diligence as do all the stocks I shared with you. I never share all the information because we just don't have the time, but you do. So before you go invest in your money, do some more due diligence, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.